And let's talk a little bit about extinction, uh, which I think is kind of around the corner, you know, uh, at hand, so to speak. There was a little article, okay, about uh, something I talked about the other day, which was the population of Russia. Just a little a quick comment on that. It says, the Kremlin's top doctor this week encouraged all Russians to what? To engage in a sex at work. <clears throat> scheme in a move to back uh, Putin's uh, attempts to counter a growing population crisis. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, they're going to be coming, uh, they're going to all become sex workers now. <laughs> uh, they're trying to stimulate the production of children. And, uh, you know, I argued past uh, many times that no, that's impossible. You cannot get restarted the population, not of Russia, of the whole planet. You know, we're not having children anywhere, okay? So even countries that traditionally had lots of kids and are associated with high population rates, even they have cut their population at least in half since the 60s. So if a woman had maybe seven children on the average, uh, I don't know, Nigeria in the 60s, well, in the same country now, you would probably get three or four only. So the population increase has, uh, the rate has dropped completely. And yeah, we can't recover from that. And again, it's funny that the Russians still haven't figured it out. They're, they think they're going to bribe the women to have children, you know, giving them some kind of perk uh, if they have a child or whatever. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen in great measure because everybody has moved to the cities, and you can't have children in the cities. There's uh, children, uh, cities are no place for children, okay? So people are not gonna have uh, children in the city for several reasons that I covered in the past. Uh, and that's, that's essentially the problem, you know? And everybody lives in cities. They move from the country to the cities. When you were in the country, you needed children. There was a different culture. And now that culture and economy has changed completely. Anyways, that's uh, talking about Russia, you know? The issue there is uh, also that we may be very close to extinction, like I always keep saying. Uh, I think it's going to happen this century, okay? Before the end of the century, I don't think we're going to see the 22nd century. It's probably going to happen before uh, mid-century, before 2050, um, even before then, I think. But uh, people say, Bill, you're, <laughs> you're such a pessimist. No, no, I drink beer. I drink uh, wine. I drink whiskey also. Uh, nah, uh, I'm not a pessimist. I'm, I'm a realist. I'm just trying to tell you what I think is coming our, in our direction. Okay. And, um, and yeah, uh, part of the equation, economics, right, has to do with the fact that uh, we have three empires on the planet today, uh, almost one and a half, because uh, the other two empires are kind of working together. Two and a half, I meant, you know, uh, really not three, uh, because the other empires, the ones that are against the United States empire, the biggest empire that's ever been on earth, uh, they're working against the American empire and they're holding it back. And, uh, you know, right now there's like a momentous uh, situation where, uh, kind of like in the days of Lincoln, where, um, you know, uh, they had this election, and if Lincoln got elected, there was going to be civil war, and everybody was going to kill each other, right? And there's a, a sense out there among the pundits that we've got that situation again, where um, there might be a World War III if uh, uh, Kamala Harris gets elected, because she might follow the uh, same uh, policy by, of Biden, and uh, on the other hand, you have Trump, and a lot of people say, well, if he gets elected, we can avoid World War III because, you know, they reach a deal, and he's a businessman, he's going to do some horse trading, and uh, we can avoid World War III. Well, I can only tell you my assessment on that, and I'm saying that it doesn't matter who gets elected. I think we're headed to towards uh, World War III anyways. And the reason is, you know, empires need to expand. And the United States is having problems, economic problems, serious economic problems, and it needs to expand. And it finds these other uh, mafias out there, you know, mafia here, mafia there. They're all, they're all mafias, really. And they want to expand. They have to expand. And if they don't expand, they die. They collapse. Uh, they kind of implode. 
And uh, so in order to avoid that implosion, it has to, they have to try to expand. And so I don't think that uh, either candidate who gets up there uh, as president, I don't think anything's going to change. The United States is forced as an empire to expand and it cannot avoid expanding. And that's why I think uh, World War III is inevitable. Uh, they're going to look for whatever excuse. It doesn't really matter. And the point is that, you know, nobody wins a world war uh, with nuclear weapons. Once those weapons start flying, lots of people are going to die. But what's really going to die is the global economy. Okay? We're, we can't recover from that. We're, we're having problems right now. It's going to be much, much worse if they throw the bombs. We can't recover from a world war in which nuclear weapons are being thrown. And uh, so this is the issue. The issue is whether uh, uh, we can avoid it. And I'm saying we can. Just like we can't avoid not having children, we cannot avoid uh, you know, a nuclear war, which is part of the economic expansion. So it's an economic problem, ultimately. And uh, you know, we, we can't fix the economic problem. The, the issue here is, you know, we long ago, we abandoned the um, uh, natural economy. What's the natural economy? Mother Nature's economy. And what is that? It's uh, food. Okay. Food is the natural economy. And uh, we, you know, the way it works in the wild is someone hunts someone else. That's it. That's how it works. And we abandon that uh, living, that style of living, that mode of living long time ago, in the Neolithic at least, you would say anywhere from 10 to 15,000 years ago, we went into farming and started planting. We stopped hunting and we became, you know, uh, farmers at the time. And from there, we worked our way to the industrialization. We modified our economic system. And today we have an even uh, more unreal economy, which is services and within that even worse service internet services so <laughs> we moved from manual services like you know uh, landscaping and maybe barbering to non you know hands-on uh, uh, type of economic system where we just create uh, things on the internet <laughs> you know and that's entertainment uh, commercials ads you know it's nothing real and so, um, you know, and that cannot continue forever. Uh, and, I, and there's no other line item we can move into from there onwards. We're, we're done, you know. So there, there's nothing else that we can do. We can't live for the next million years uh, doing services, especially internet service from to each other. Okay? So, uh, yeah, our economic system, I think, is going to collapse. World War III will just exacerbate that situation and it's going to be all over. So it's not that I'm pessimistic. It's that I'm telling you realistically, that's what I see. And uh, all you can do is uh, take that with a grain of salt, with a pinch of salt, and uh, reach your own conclusions.